Hello everybody and welcome back. In 2017 at BlizzCon I introduced my new costume, Mongo the Red Demon. I had a lot of fun making him. Uh, unfortunately I put so much work in the costume that I didn't really have a weapon so I really quickly built a sword in one day and I feel that was the weakest part of the entire costume was my weapon. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a war axe to match that costume and even better I'm going to paint it with plaid effects paints right here on the Evil Ted channel. I was inspired by the image I found on Pinterest. This design is done by polycount.com. You guys can check out his link below the video. Here's the paper pattern of the axe. I'm gonna use a craft knife to take the spikes off. I'm gonna do them separately. I'm going to be using two sheets of one inch EVA foam I got from TNT Cosmetic Supplies. Now I'm going to glue them together with Super 77 spray glue. Press them together. Now to trace the pattern. The next step is to cut it out at 90 degree angles on the bandsaw. Now the basic shape is cut out, I need to trace the details on the other side. Pull them apart so that I can bevel them separately using the bandsaw. To get my bevel, I'm going to adjust the table at a 50 degree angle. This adjustment is for the front of the axe blade. Now I'm going to change the bevel to a 30 degree angle. This is for the top and back of the axe. Now the bandsaw blade cutting is all done, the bevels aren't quite lined up yet. With a sharp knife, I'm going to cut the bevels a little closer to the original lines of the pattern. Sharpen the blade between cuts. I got my rotary tool and my sanding drum, do a little grinding. Now smooth things out with my 80 grit sanding block. Now go back over with my 220 sanding stick. The axe is taking shape. Let's move on to the spikes. I'm gonna be using one inch EVA foam for that. Drawing the guidelines for shaping up the spikes with the sanding drum. Now I'm gonna switch over to the stone bit for smoothing. Now the big spike is all shaped up and glue them together. Now to install the PVC support pipe. Use a little 80 grit on the PVC pipe to give it a little more grip. Apply the contact cement. And put it back together very carefully, making sure I line the edges up together. Now to place the spikes, I'm gonna take a straight pin and pin them in place. Trace them. To attach them, I'm going to be using earth magnets. Glue 
glue them in with goop glue. While the glue dries, let's cut the plastic skull and fit it to the top of the axe. I'll be using my cutting wheel. Now I'm using straight pens to pen it in place. To help blend in the skull, I'm going to be using foam clay. To help it stick, I like to wet the EVA foam first. Wetting the foam clay helps smooth it out and blends in the edges. While that dries, let's install the magnets into the spikes. Apply pressure over the magnet, which will make an impression. Then grind a hole for the magnet and glue it in with the goop glue. Now they use the same technique attaching the magnets to the plastic skull and the spikes. I'm putting frog tape on the spikes to help me from getting zappa gap on them while gluing down the rubber trim. This rubber trim helps uh, hide the seams and makes it that the spikes look a little bit more like part of the axe. Remove the tape. And now do a test fit. Now let's move on to the bone spike. Install the PVC pipe and glue them together. I'm going to do a little bit more shaping up with the belt sander. Now the bone spikes a little bit more to my liking. We're going to wrap the pipe with some 6mm foam. Time to do a test fit with the spikes. Also you can see I added some rubber trim for detail. Now that the foam clay is dry, we can remove the plastic skull. I'm going to heat up the PVC pipe so I can put a little curve into it for my axe hand. While heating, I like to rotate the PVC pipe so it gets heat evenly. Bend it, hold it into shape until it cools. Now it's cool. Let's cover it with four millimeter foam. Center it up and wrap it very slowly. Now we're gonna add detail to the ax. We have my pattern here. We're gonna cut out some uh, two millimeter foam pieces. Before gluing them down, I like to take off the hard edges by running down with a stone bit. Glue them down. To make the detail lines pop more, I'm going to cut a little deeper with my craft knife. Now with the heat gun heated up, the detail pops more, so now I'm going to go back in with a stone bit and soften the edge. Of. 
Now I'm gonna add a smaller spike to the blade. And this I'm gonna glue down. Now adding some rivet detail. Now we're gonna move on to the handle. With a sharpener, I'm gonna draw on some wood grain. And then go back in with my wood burner. Now with my rounded stone bit, I'm gonna add some hammer metal texture to it. Now with the rounded bit on the wood burner, I'm gonna add some deep grooves in my bone spike. All the parts are done and the details are finished. I'm going to brush on some rapid fill to help smooth out the parts. Now that everything is covered and dry, the next step is to go back in with some 220 sanding grit. Everything is sanded, so before sealing, we're going to cover the magnets with some tape. I'm going to coat this with Creature Cast Rubber, semi-rigid. Uh, to apply it, we're going to spray it on with my critter gun. To prevent the critter gun from clogging, I like to pour it through a screen. To apply the Creature Cast, I'm going to be using my compressor that's set at 25 PSI. I'm going to lay down about three coats. Everything is dry. I'm going to remove the tape. Now it's time for paint. Plat effects paint in all their amazing colors. Here are the colors I picked out for the axe, and I'm going to do a test with the color chainmail. The key is to do a lot of thin coats and let them dry between coats. It works very much like nail polish. All the colors look great, especially the metallics. What separates Plat FX from other acrylic paints is the flexibility. No cracking, very durable. For the spikes, I'm going to be using the color Chainmail. For the base color, I'm going to be using Grounded on the bone spike. For the axe, I'll be using their Bloodline Red color. I'm going to use Chainmail color for the blade. Using the desert sand for the base color of the wooden handle and a watered down charred root. Then adding a dark brown acrylic wash and water with a paper towel. Using the copper plate color for the rivets and the trim on the spikes. Now to paint the plastic skull, I used Rust-Oleum 2X Red. And for aging, we're using a black wash acrylic. Wipe off the excess with a paper towel. Now the acrylic sticks really well to the red 2X, so I'm going to use a 90% alcohol and a paper towel just to wipe a little bit more off so the red pops a little bit more. I'm going to attach the skull to the foam axe with using goop glue. To hold the skull in place while it dries, use some plastic wrap. All the plat effects painting is done. Now I'm going to do some aging with oil paints. I'll be using a mix of burnt umber, raw umber, and black. 
I like to apply with a brush. Then come back in with a dry brush to help create the fades on the edges. All the aging is complete. Everything looks great. Let's move back to the handle. I'm gonna add some leather strapping to it. So before I do that, I take 99% alcohol and a paper towel and remove some of the paint. This will help the contact cement stick a lot better. Applying the contact cement. Wrap it down. Age it with some watered down black acrylic. Now to seal the paint job with acrylic spray varnish. Well, there it is. That was Mongo the Red Demon. Uh, everything I used in this build is listed just below the video. Um, a big shout out to Platifex Paint who sponsored this video. Um, I have to admit, I worked a little bit out of my comfort zone. I normally work with a lot of airbrush paints and Plaid Paints is designed to be applied with a brush. I was a little nervous. I started working with the paints and it went on beautifully. No brush strokes, self-leveling. And when I work with metallic paints, I've always been an issue with metallic acrylic paints. I've never seen it be even but not with plat effects paints. All the metallics go on beautifully and smoothly. If you guys are new to cosplay, you really want to get into a durable, flexible paint, plat paints is the way to go. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. If it's your first time watching, don't forget to subscribe. Click on the button. Go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, where I have numerous patterns for sale. And while you're at it, please get on my mailing list to keep you up to date where I'm going to be next and when the next video is coming out. I'm so happy how this turned out. I really did. I am gonna be, can't wait to experiment more with Platifex paints. Everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you back next time right here on the Evil Ted channel.